Hello everybody, welcome back. My name's Jace, this channel's about our journey to become more self-sufficient and today it's time for me to move on some of my young plants to harden them off. So if you're a regular follower of the channel you'll know that I've just built a cold frame and that's now down the garden in position and I've just checked the forecast over the next sort of week or so and the lowest temperatures that we're getting down to in this area at the moment are about four or five degrees so that means that using the cold frame I can move on some of my young plants from this conservatory to the cold frame and start hardening them off a little bit. Now this, this room that we're in now isn't actually heated so on a night time it gets pretty cool anyway you know we're in single digits out here on a night at the moment so these plants are already pretty hardy. That said in the, su in the sunny days it does get quite warm so they've had a good environment to grow on put on some growth but they're also quite used to some cool temperatures on a night. So certain plants here, I'm happy to move on outside. And the first thing I'm going to move on to a cold frame are these Monge 2 peas. And they've probably been sown now for three weeks, two or three weeks, and definitely time for those to move on. Peas are very hardy. Some people think that they can actually survive down to minus 10. I personally wouldn't try that, but um, certainly single digit figures or even just tipping over below freezing, they're going to be okay. The second ones I'm going to move on are Marathat peas. And again, these have been going for about two weeks and they're going to go down the cold frame as well and then I'm going to move on onions so these are Elsa Craig and they're going to be quite happy down there onions can generally grow through the winter so they should be fine down the cold frame and also leeks these are musselberg leeks so i'm going to move them down there too again cold tolerant so that's going to make some space in here and i'll use that space to bring on some of the more tender crops like cucumbers aubergines if i can get them to germinate that is they haven't yet um, and tomatoes which i've got in a propagator upstairs and if my chilies and peppers ever do emerge they could come down here too. It's also going to give me some space to sow some more seeds and pot some things on and it's that time of year where we start to struggle in the house because we're running out of space as we pot things on it takes up more room and we sow more seeds because we now we are now actually in spring but certainly where I live it's still pretty cool. We had a really warm February and we're having a cold March but that's the way the cookie crumbles. So lettuce I'm not going to put down there just yet. These are iceberg 
And although lettuce like cool temperatures, they're not a hot weather plant, they don't like it too cool. So I'm going to leave these up here for now just to grow on a bit more. So I'll get the camera set up. We'll get all these plants down to the cold frame and we'll see what we can fit in there. And if you haven't seen the videos on how I built a cold frame, I will put a link to part one and part two in the description. So I built this cold frame over the last few days and it's had its first night outside and it seems to be fine. I've put a thermometer just in there wedged under the door just to see what the temperature is inside and it's reading about seven degrees which is about two degrees warmer than it is stood here at the moment it's actually quite a chilly day so I'm going to put these things these plants I've got in there and see how they get on for a few days so I'm going to take that out and I have yet to make proper props for this but that should do just for now so I'm going to put the peas in now these Monge 2 peas I didn't chip these I just planted the dry pea seeds straight into the compost and I've only had about 50% germination about a bit more I sowed 20 12 have come up so I'm going to put those in there and I just need another little prop for this side there we go that'll do these are the marifat peas and I did chip these ones and I've had nearly 100% germination. There's only one, two, three, four, four out of 40 that haven't come up. So if you haven't seen the video on how I chitted these, I'll put a link to that in the description as well. So I'm going to put those in there. And then we have the onions, Elsa Craig. So I'm going to put those in the tray with the peas because as I said in the video when I made these, I want to try and limit any spillage of water inside the frame if I can. So they'll fit in that tray quite happily. And the leeks. So we'll put those at this end. And I've still got massive amount of space in there. It's bigger than I thought it was. As you can see, quite a lot of space left. And I've got the height the front just about right these onions will be just under the glass at the moment 
So I shall close that up. Get them a bit warmer. And they can have their first night out in the wild or semi-wild. They're protected. So the next thing that I want to do is get some of these brassicas uh, potted on. We've also got some spinach in there, which uh, I believe is actually part of the beetroot family, I believe. So I need to get some of these potted on. As you can see, they've gone pretty leggy. And that's at this time of the year when you're trying to grow brassicas indoors, that's what happens. Too much heat, not enough light. So the plant's warm enough to really start trying to grow and it's then going to reach for the light and going leggy is the result. So I'm going to get these potted on and I'm just going to put them on into their own individual pots. Probably a, like a three inch pot, something like that. This is a mixture of last year's spent um, potato compost, a bit of a mickey lot in there, and I've also just about half filled the tray with multi-purpose compost as well, which is really damp. It's been in a bag uh, all winter, so there should be enough goodness in there for them to continue growing until they get moved on, which isn't going to be too long now, hopefully, weather permitting. They are a cold tolerant group of plants that I've got here, so not too worried about them getting too cold. And I'm going to put these in the cold frame when I've potted them on. So, not a bad little root system for a plant of that size. So, what I don't want to do is hold on to the true leaf that's just starting to emerge. If I'm going to hold on to any leaves, it'll be the seedling leaves, but I'm going to try not to do that. I'm just going to pop it in and plant it deeper than it was before. And brassicas are quite happy for you to do that and that's a way you can solve the legginess of them. So you can see that's planted at least an inch deeper than it was, maybe a bit more. So that's a broccoli, well it's actually a calabrese, not a broccoli. So we'll start a tray of broccolis going. So that's a duff pot that can go into the mix. Now here I've got two, I've obviously sown two in the same pot and I'll just do exactly the same but divide them. And to do that I'm just going to very t gently tease the compost away from the roots hold on to the seedling leaves and just very gently tease them apart and then I've got two seedlings that I can pot on and to do that I've already got a few pots that are filled with compost these these pots are the ones that the peas didn't come up in so I'll just make a hole get the roots right down in there and there we go and the same with this one I think that's a pea that started to come up and failed for some reason in fact you can see the pea on the bottom you do sometimes get that with seeds they start to germinate and then for whatever reason they don't like 
something or they run out of energy and that's that so I'll get all this broccoli done or calabrese sorry and I'll bring you back for the next lot so I've got a whole tray of broccoli there calabrese sorry and I've got half a tray here We'll put that one to one side for a moment and because of space in the cold frame I don't want to start another tray for a different crop um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the spinach now and put them in here and the reason I'm going to do the spinach is the spinach are easily identifiable from the broccoli whereas if I was to put uh, cauliflower in this tray with the calabrese the chances are I couldn't tell them apart whereas I would definitely be able to tell the spinach apart from the broccoli because they're two totally different looking plants and I can recognize a spinach seedling plant pretty easy so exactly the same process just drop it in and spinach are a good crop early in the year because they're cold cold resistant and it's a great time to grow them because as it warms up they will bolt and go to seed could do with a few smaller pots actually there we go we've got plant pots everywhere so I think I've only got the four spinach because spinach are great in that you can just pick a few leaves, leave the plant to grow on. Apologies if there's a bit of background noise because the uh, guys are working on the site next door. And big news I'm going to do a live this coming Sunday because um, we're over a thousand subscribers now and I thought it'd be a good thing to do I've no idea how it's going to go um, never done a live before so uh, I have tried to test the setup and things like that. It, it's going to be a very basic live, just me, no, no guests or anything like that. I need to get the hang of uh, how to do it all. So, if you'd like to come along, 7:30 p.m. this Sunday, um, there'll be the chat function where you can chat amongst yourselves while I try and navigate my way through doing the live show and um, yeah I'll put a link in the description there's also a link on the home page of the channel somewhere and probably one floating around in the um, suggested videos and all that on your YouTube so that's that okay done those for some reason I sowed savoy cabbage and a red cabbage all the red cabbage have come up and none of the savoy have come up that must be down to old seed bad seed okay so we'll do the cabbage next I think so move that and we'll get the cabbage 
put it on. And just like the broccoli, if these are a bit leggy, I'll plant them a bit deeper. Pretty much all the brassicas family, you can do that. No problem. It's cold, cold today, definitely cold. So what are you guys up to this uh, week? If it's cold in your area, are you sowing seeds or hanging fire? I must admit I went and checked uh, the soil temperature in the beds yesterday and it was five degrees. So sowing carrots, parsnips, things like that at the moment just isn't going to happen. I'm not going to do it until the soil warms up a bit. So I'm just doing the cauliflower now and these are cauliflower all year round. Good variety, we had a few nice ones last year. Really like cauliflower but it's I find it isn't difficult to actually grow into a plant but you've got two main pests or I have two main pests with it and that is cabbage white which I try to get around by netting and slugs you can look at it and go oh, I've got a really nice cauliflower coming on there and then when you get it up to the kitchen and cut into it it's just full of slugs so I'm working hard to defeat the slug population early in the year. I've got lots of slug pots out. And I do need to check those actually. I probably need to tip out all the horribleness that's in them, all the slime, and uh, replenish them with a bit more beer. You can just use yeast if uh, you want to, but. We just buy a really cheap lager. That seems to work fine. A weed. It's nice to be moving plants on. It's a sign that spring is upon us. Just needs to warm up a bit. So we have red cabbage and cauliflower in that tray. So I've got kale left to do because these are weeds. Okay, I do like a bit of kale. Sunday lunch, steamed or whatever. Very nice. So those done. I'm going to have to find another tray for them. And that's if I've got enough room in the cold frame. Don't know. We may need to put some of it 
actually leave some of it in here in the greenhouse. Probably be okay in here. So this is a curly kale, curly leaf variety. I can't remember the name of the variety. So yeah, if you are going to come along to the live, let me know. Let me know in the comments. And um, we're going to have a, a loose subject of are you ready for spring? Even though spring's here. And see if we can get a discussion going on what everybody's been doing. And are they ready? Aren't they ready? What have they got left to do? Etc. And I always uh, over sow with brassicas because by the time you've planted them out, I never plant them all out to start with anyway because the chances are the slugs are going to eat some of them. And then you have the cabbage white and if you suffer from club root on your plot, well, that, that is a problem. I don't seem to here. Uh, and there's also, I can't remember the name of it now, the little grub, like a big maggot that lives under the soil. And that, is it a cutworm? I think it's a cutworm. And it just seems to eat the roots. And then one day your plant just dies. You pull it up, there's no roots. A real pain they are very common where the land used to be grass which my plot was it used to look like they live under the turf okay well, last one Right, cabbage savoy, they didn't come up. So I need to give these a water. I'll give all the trays a water. Uh, I'll find another tray to put the kale in and we'll get them in the cold frame. So that's a lot of things potted on, moved on, made some space in the house and hopefully they'll be quite happy in there. So thanks very much for watching everyone. Hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps the channel. And if you like this sort of content, you want to see more of it, then consider subscribing. And I might see you on the live on Sunday. Thanks a lot.